Oh, got it. So many of you have been asking me to make a video helping you to identify the various resources in the frame, in the cells, such as pollen and honey and nectar and bee bread. And so you want to know the difference between how do you discover what is capped over honey and what is capped over pupae. And I want to help you discover that today. And it all starts right now. What's up? I'm David Byrne, CAS Certified Master Beekeeper, and thanks for joining me today. I appreciate you dropping by my beekeeping channel, and if it's your first time here, please subscribe and click on the bell so you'll be notified each time I make a new video. Today we're going to jump into that hive, and I want to help you identify what you're looking at. That's going to make you a much better better beekeeper. And at the end of this video, we're going to have coffee time. Many of you enjoy coffee time. And I've got some surprises built into the video. So keep watching it all the way through. Now let's get started. Okay, so at the corner here, you can see this is capped over honey. Now this capped over honey area has more of a wet look to it. You can see the wax that's covering the capped over honey. Whereas over here, this is actually capped over brood. Now this is uh, pupae that is capped over. And if you want to move the bees around with your fingers, then you can see how the brood looks more velvety. It looks more like cloth compared over there to the upper right corner. It's more waxy looking. Here we have a frame of pollen. And you can see here, pollen can be many colors, but in this scene, it's a bright yellow. Here's a frame of bee bread. You can see here that the pollen doesn't look dry. It looks kind of wet. Bee bread has a mixture of some moisture from the enzymes and saliva glands from the bees so that the bee bread begins to break down. Here we have a frame of young larvae. You can see it here and uh, the bees are tending to this very young larvae. Now, this young larvae is a good way to test the health of your brood because what you want to see in young larvae, such as what you're seeing here, is that you want to make sure that it's pearly white. You don't want to see anything gray. It's got to be very white. These are C-shaped. They're glistening. This, this is very healthy larvae in, the, in this frame here. So kind of get used to seeing the different things in the frames. Aha, uh -huh, there's our queen. There she is, her majesty, walking around, looking around, seeing where she might lay some eggs. Um, not marked. You can see her retinue is surrounding her and taking care of her, using my stylus here to point her out to you. So this is something that frustrates a lot of beekeepers that can't, uh, readily identify where their queen is in the hive. So this is the anatomy of a honey frame. And you can see here has a lot of propolis across the top here that the bees use to attach it probably to the next frame beside it. You can see here where some of the comb has cracked away. Uh, of course, that will be easily and quickly mended by the bees uh, when I put it back in the hive. But I just wanted to pull this out and show you this is a frame that actually does not have any foundation in it. It is a foundationless frame. And in this case, um, this propolis is really interesting. You could take a hive tool and you can actually scrape it off and use this propolis somewhere. It's a hot day today. So a lot of this propolis is pretty pliable like this. And look at that, isn't that nice? If you've never played with uh, propolis before, it smells so good. And it is something that you can use if you want to uh, use it kind of like glue. If you're playing with some queen cells or if you're playing with uh, raising queens and you need those queen cups to be smashed into the queen bar a little better, even propolis can, can be a great tool for that. But you can just scrape off propolis. You know, a lot of people use propolis traps to actually uh, gather up a lot of propolis. I've made videos on propolis traps and some people sell it for profit but in this case we're just gonna yeah just scraping it off a little bit to show you what it looks like I'm gonna try to keep it kind of pure it looks like there could be a dead bee coming up right here I will skip that maybe a bee got caught maybe that's something else but 
Anyway, just wanted to show you what propolis looks like. It's real sticky. And if you buy a new bee suit and you start working bees a lot, you're gonna get propolis all over your brand new bee suit and you'll never get it off. I don't care how many times you wash it. I used to clean frames like this uh, back in the day, but I really don't go to much trouble today to try to get all the propolis off. But back in the day, we would try to clean the propolis off of these frames, like in this area right here, under, under the top bar, this little lip area right here, we could clean that off. And, if, and of course, right here on the side bar, if you look at that, uh, this can get so thick that your frames almost won't fit together anymore. So you have to kind of really scrape this off to help your frames fit together uh, because it just keeps them from sitting nice and tight together. And so I recommend always scraping this off when you're kind of bored, you don't have a lot to do, especially if you have honey frames that you're ready to put back on the hive. I think it's a really good idea to get as much propolis off as you can off of those sidebars to help your frames fit tighter together on a, on a honey super. So you would just need to, to do that. I don't think it's worth going in there and doing it with bees on it when you're working a hive or anything. If you have your frames already out, it's a good time to go in there and scrape them and get much propolis off as you can. So let's talk a little bit more about this frame uh, while we have it here in front of us. If you notice here, there's some uh, discoloration. You have some whiter color, you have some more orange or brown color here. And what causes the different colors? Well, a lot's going on here, actually. Uh, this could have had honey in it that was a darker type uh, honey from a, a nectar source where the honey was dark and it stained the actual comb. That's one thing that could be going on like here. Um, another thing is if we could zoom in, we might even notice that some of that darkness is actually propolis. You'll see this more in brood comb where they're raising brood, they sterilize their comb by adding a little propolis to it. Also that adds strength. So they do use propolis sometimes in those cell, in the cell walls, they'll add propolis here and there. And to be honest with you, to me, that's what it sort of looks like. You know, I can't be 100% sure, but it looks like the top of those cells have been added with some propolis, either as an antibiotic or a, a sterilizer. Propolis is really antimicrobial, you know, and they might be part of uh, adding it to the comb so they keep their honey very sanitized. Or it could just be stained a little bit from tracking, but if, you, if I angle it and get the view just right, you can see that that does look like propolis has been added to these cells. The other feature I want you to be aware of, and again, this is foundationless uh, honey super frame. Notice how they've attached the wall over here. They've attached the comb to the wall and they've attached it here. What do you think this is? This little hole here and this little hole here? I hope you are enjoying the video so far. We got some more frames and some more cells, some more things to identify. But again, if you're enjoying this video, give me a thumbs up. It helps me to know what kind of videos to make. And I've got some cool things to show you in addition to these frames in just a few moments. So stay with me. Well, we call those communication ports or communication holes. We believe that the bees leave this as a walkway to go to the next frame without having to go all the way around the edges. It does give the bees a little more walking room to go through rather than have to go all the way around. So these are communication holes or uh, sometimes called communication uh, ports that they walk through. When you buy foundation, like plastic foundation, if you look closely on the edge over here of your foundation, it will actually have a perforated area you can snap off. And if you snap that off, it gives the bees the ability to walk through. Put it in the frame, now it leaves a little corner like we just, that bees do in nature naturally, as you can see here. <laughs> well, uh, look at this frame. You never expected to see this, right? Well, anyway, if you can tell, this is just a, a teacher's aid that we have. It's a 10 frame hive, what has, I forget where we bought it, but it has these pictures in it and it's, it's a teacher's aid. But if you can see here, here's the egg when it's laid. 
And then here's probably a seven, six or seven day old larvae. And this is when it's first starting to pupate, probably day nine or 10 after the egg was laid. And look at this, a purple eyed pupae, kind of an older pupae. And then this is when the worker bee is mature and cutting her way out of her cell. And so it just talks about the 21 day cycle that the bee goes through in order to become an adult. I thought you'd like to see that. I want to give it like holiday 4th of July colors. Ooh, that's a red stripe. Now I need a white one on the edge and it would be red, white, and blue, won't it? <laughs> That's not bad, is it? I want to paint her, his, I want to paint his abdomen too. Just so I can see him a little bit better. Is he making that noise? Uh-huh. I didn't know drones made that kind of noise. It's it's his wings. Oh. He's flapping his wings right now. There, that's cool. That <laughs> he cool. is really he is really that is uh, fancy. Yeah. Alright, we're gonna let him go. You ready? And away you go. <laughs> Catch it. If you haven't received a copy of the book that Sherry and I wrote, you can get a copy of it on Amazon or from our website, honeybeesonline.com. If you buy from the website, it's an autographed copy. But you make the decision. We'd like you to copy of that. Also, I want to tell you about something that I got off Amazon that's really cool. I bought, look at this. This is what you think it is. It's burlap. And I love this as smoker fuel. I can't get enough of this. But this is actually a potato sack. They, they have in pot potato sack races. And um, it said it's food grade quality. And so I, I, that just means it's not sprayed with pesticides, I think. Anyway, it makes great smoker fuel. I buy this and then I cut it up and I use it in my smokers. I'll leave a link below if you're interested in this burlap. Also, don't forget about my Burns Bees feeding system that I invented and designed. A great way to feed your bees and the upcoming dearth that's going to be hitting us in late summer, early fall. Great way to keep feeding those bees and keep the nutrition up really strong in your hive so that they can raise bees of winter physiology. I'll leave links in the description below. I'm glad to be with you again for another special coffee time. Thanks so much for sticking around watching the video this long to the end so that you can join me for coffee time. That means a lot to me. Way to go. I really do appreciate all of you as subscribers and viewers, watchers of my beekeeping channel. I work hard to make some pretty cool videos, the best I can do at this point in my life. So I hope you appreciate it and uh, I'm giving you all I got. So everything I'm, everything I'm able to muster up and do, I'm helping you know about beekeeping. And I do really appreciate you watching. If you weren't watching, I wouldn't be making videos. So the more viewers I get, the more watch time I see, the more subscribers, the more I get the cameras out, and the more I go out there and make videos. So when you watch, when you subscribe, you're really helping yourself out. <laughs> more than you are me really um, so I really do appreciate that I really really value you uh, as somebody that wants to watch what I say and and uh, learn from me so I'm humbled by that thank you so much you may have noticed the picnic table is not here it's actually over there we still have it here we're still going to use it but I've 
I couldn't film on the picnic table anymore. And it's because it's rained so much that it was always wet. You know, wood, when it gets wet, stays wet for, oh, I don't know, a day or two. And so I just couldn't sit there and do any recordings. It was so frustrating. And, you know, it was getting old and I wasn't sure if I really wanted to replace it because I know for some of you it holds a very sentimental value, a special place in your heart. <laughs> and so I didn't want to burn it. I decided to keep it. I thought maybe I would make a hive out of it. But then I thought, well, it's kind of got some... I think it's treated lumber back in the old days when they treated it with some kind of toxic chemical. <laughs> and I thought, eh, I don't know if I want to make a hive out of that kind of wood. Even though it's probably aired out, it's probably okay. But the wood isn't the right size to make a hive out of. There'd be a lot of work. I'd have to trim it. I'd have to thin it down. So if you have any ideas what you want me to do with the picnic table, uh, leave some comments below. You know, today in Coffee Time, I want to talk about things that are hard to do. None of us like to do hard things. You know, our brains are wired to always make us take the easiest path. I don't know if you knew that or not. And that shows in our lifestyles. We like to make our lifestyles easy. But I want to stop you before you go too far down that path. It's because we do a lot of things that are hard. We have to go through some hard times. We have to do things in a hard, difficult way in order to achieve something. Uh, quite honestly, making videos like this, it's very hard. There's, I don't want to sound like I'm whining, but there's a lot of things that go into a video that's a lot more difficult than you might think. I have to deal with the weather. I have to deal with the wind. I have to deal with my cameras being set up right. I have to have some idea of what I'm going to say. I have to deal with lighting, you know. There's a lot of things that go into just making a video, the sound and such. And it's hard making a video. I really want to make a video more often than just once or twice a week. But it's so hard to do. And it's so time consuming that it's such a challenge for me. It's unbelievable. Anyway, uh, there are some things that you may enjoy doing that maybe you want to participate in a sporting activity. Maybe you feel like, you know, if I could uh, be a great basketball player, baseball player, football player, maybe you want to be an, an actor, a musician, all of these things that, you know, maybe something to do with the arts that involve you really working hard to achieve greater success. And in order to be that way, you have to go through a very difficult, hard time of being better than most people. You're, most people, I, I'm going to say that, you know, I know you hear that train. That's another difficult thing about making a video. I live over one mile away from that train track. And every time I turn my camera on, there's, there's a train that goes by. And there's not even that many trains that go by. <laughs> I don't know. I don't get it. So that's just part of my video and coffee time is, will we hear a train go by? But my point in all this is saying that if you want to achieve something great, it's going to be hard. Because if it wasn't hard, everybody would be doing it, right? Not everybody's making a beekeeping video, although there's a lot of people that are. Not everybody is a musician, and, and especially like a professional musician. You know, there's people that play the violin, and then there's people that play the violin as a professional violinist. Wow. The people that are professionals at that have spent hours and hours and days upon weeks upon years doing the, putting in the hard time of how do I hit that note? How do I get past that, that mindset of I can, I can do this faster, I can hit those notes faster? And so, if it wasn't hard, everybody would be doing it. Beekeeping is hard. I mean, I like to say that it's easy. And you can approach it and make it easy by kind of like doing nothing but throwing the beads in there and pulling up a chair and a glass of iced tea and watch the bees go back and forth until winter. And that is easy. But chances are your bees are going to die because you didn't manage them throughout the year. And if you want to manage them to help them survive the winter, you got to put the hard time in 
to check for mites and make sure they have room and check for pests and diseases. Do they have enough resources? Do they have enough room to grow? And you need to do your part. It's hard. It's hot. I was out in the hives yesterday. Oh my gosh, it was so humid. After rain, it, the sun came out, heated up, so sweaty and hot. So there's a lot of things about uh, life that requires us to really put in some time doing the hard stuff if we want to achieve what we want to achieve. And I want to challenge you to do that, to put in the hard time. It doesn't have to be like painfully hard. It just means that we have to get up maybe earlier in the morning. And I do that every day. In order to prepare for this video, I, I'm filming now and it's almost eight o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Would you believe that I woke up at 5 a.m. just to prepare to turn that camera on? I know it's crazy. It took me three hours. Uh, and you think, well, what in the world would it take a guy three hours? If it takes you three hours, then you're doing something wrong. Uh, probably. <laughs> I don't doubt that. But I'm just really particular about everything that needs to happen before I start filming. Uh, right now, the sun is is off to the east as it rises, and it would hit me right on the side of the face. So I have to put an umbrella, a big umbrella over here in order to block that so my lighting stays the same. I, I have to configure my sound just right, and I have to set up the table, draw the table off. I have to get all my cameras set up, make sure they have enough memory cards and batteries, powers, you know what I mean? It just takes a little while. Make sure the background's kind of cleaned up a little bit in order and all that. Um, and I, I don't go about it like hurry, hurry, hurry. I'm kind of taking my time. But it took three hours to set up to make this video. And some people don't want to wake up at 5 o'clock to do something at 8 o'clock. Like, and especially I make a video. You wake up at 8 o'clock and go to work you want to make money to pay the bills I get that but I'm talking about if you want to do something that's more in the line of uh, being creative someone that creates ideas or inventions uh, you got to get up early or have a schedule during the day when you can dedicate time uh, somebody said you need to spend an hour a day planning to make a video I thought an hour a day oh my gosh I do not spend an hour a day make planning videos. I spend at least four to six hours a day planning my next video. And that's just brainstorming. That's like concepts. How would I do that? Would it be interesting? That's not counting the edit time or you know the filming time and all that. But I just spend probably a big part of my day actually uh, thinking about what would be the next cool video I'm gonna make. And I've got a ton of ideas. I write them down all over the house. That's hard, but that's what it takes to make videos. And that's what it takes for me to make videos. I don't want to just make, you know, a, a lot of you tell me that I like your channel. I like your information. I'm going to just stick with you because you have a good way of teaching on beekeeping. And then some of you will complain about other beekeeping videos that you watch on YouTube. And I'm not going to go there because I'm, I've never been one to put somebody else down in order to lift myself up. I think that's wrong. But I understand what you're saying. There are some people that really don't put the time in and it's difficult to watch. And I'm sure in the early days I made videos like that. And I probably still will occasionally. I try not to, but I understand that. I try to make videos interesting and try to put the time in to make them interesting. And so it does take some hard effort to do it. So let's talk about you. Um, what are you doing right now that you could level up? That's a phrase that I hear a lot now. You need to level up your game. Like what are you doing now if you're a musician or you're a sports person or maybe you have a hobby that is kind of almost becoming a business or more than an interest? Uh, what is your passion in life that you'd love to pursue? But to do it, you're going to have to level up. You know, what would it take for you to level up and do that? Isn't that interesting to think about that? Um, I'm so excited about life. There's nothing that limits any of us, really, from doing what we uh, want to do, what 
I mean, how much we pursue it might be limited by, you know, our age or any physical uh, barriers that we may have with our health or something like that. I get that. But I'm just saying, all in all, uh, there's really so much more we could be doing and enjoying. And the only thing that really holds us back is us. It's not the other people. I mean, we like to blame people. Oh, if it wasn't for that guy, I could do this. <laughs> if it wasn't that the fact that I had this kind of an upbringing, I would be a better person. I'd have more accomplishments under my belt. But uh, my parents, blah, you know, you want to blame a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, that's just a waste of time, really. I mean, no matter what's happened in your past, uh, it's not preventing you from having the future that you want. What is preventing you from having the future that you want is whether or not you want to put in the hard time of getting where you want to be. It does take hard time. Every, and we know that. Simple examples. You want to lose 10 pounds? It's easier to eat. It's easier not to exercise. You get my point? <laughs> if you want to get in shape, kind of build up some muscles, it's easier not to lift weights. It's easier not to go for a walk or bike ride or do a little running or something. And so it takes the hard time. If it wasn't hard, everybody would be doing it. And so why not rise up, level up, and increase just a little bit of what you're wanting to pursue, what you're doing right now. Can you level up just a little bit? That's what my coffee time is about today. Can you level up? Are you drinking... Oh, I don't think I can say name brands, can I? Are you drinking Bolger's coffee? <laughs> <laughs> and if you're drinking Bolgers, why not experiment a little bit and say, maybe David has something. Maybe I could roast my own beans. Maybe I could grind my own coffee. Maybe it would taste better in a French press. I don't have to be stuck in a rut and do it all this way because my dad did, my mom did, and I did. And I always did. Everybody else that does it that fancy way is stupid. You know, that's, that's the wrong attitude. You're never going to level up and enjoy and experiment and find that something's better, right? Level up, put in a little bit more hard effort into it, a little more time, and see if, doggone it, that doesn't make that better. Wow, I'm getting excited about this. This is a good coffee time. <laughs> but, and beekeeping is the same way. You know, you can put bees in a box, sit out there and watch them, think they're okay, because from five feet away, they look good. But you gotta level up. You gotta go in there and become a better beekeeper. Look around, look for pests and diseases and test for mites and take action against the mites. Make sure they have good nutrition in the hive. All of that stuff is leveling up, putting a little more hard time, hard effort into it and see if it doesn't make things better. All right, well, that's been great. I hope this has been encouraging for you. You pick something in your life, level up. We'll call that a little more hard work. Level up and see if it doesn't get better.